Hi guys, welcome to Academy. In this video, we're going to go through how to create this object. It's like a mechanical type object. Um, so, there are many ways to make it. Um, I'm going to start by creating this bit, and then we'll create that coming off it, and then we'll create this circular part, then this back plate and then finally this plate here. So, also if you're following along in Imperial, take a screenshot of this. Um, this is a conversion table for all the numbers that I'm going to be using. So, you can follow along in one decimal place and then f go to two decimal places for these three, maybe, um, or just could be you could be precise if you really want it's totally up to you you could even use your own numbers um, it doesn't really matter to be honest as long as it all fits um, anyway so I'm gonna come to I'm gonna say new family and I'm gonna scroll to metric generic or for you it could be imperial generic or just generic model now these are two reference planes, so basically that means you can draw on these um, and create objects coming, like extruding off them. You'll understand that better um, in the future, the more you play with it. So I'm going to come in and say extrusion, up there, um, I've selected it. I'm going to place it relatively centrally, just to make it easier to use these reference lines. So I'm gonna, I need it to be, I need that base. I'm just gonna keep this here in the background. I need the base to be 60 wide by 70 long by 20 high. So, sorry. Um, so I'm gonna, after I place it down, I can click these and say 60. 70, enter. Now I'm going to change the extrusion end to 20. I'm going to highlight all of this, move from there to there, and then move it from that center point to that center point. Now it's nice and central. And click the tick, and there you go. So I'll come to 3D mode, and I've got my basic structure, well, my basic object. Now, I want to create this part. I'm going to start by creating this central circle here, and then create the outer um, radius, and then the lines, then the fillets at the end. So I'm going to say create, set, pick a plane, OK click that one. So I've set that as my work plane. You can use, oh, no, I haven't. So I'm going to say set, pick a plane, OK. There you go. Now that's set. There you go. Um, I'm going to say extrusion, because that's going to be my front face now. I'm going to come here to right. I'm going to say this, pick lines, offset it by 60. Now, I, the, sorry, the reason why I picked 60 is because I know that this, the center point of this circle is exactly 60 millimeters away from the top, um, from the top of that, and that line is that one there. Um, so I'll click it. Remember, you, you could do it for either side. Um, slightly lower, we'll put it there. Now, circle, come to this midpoint here. I'm going to change this offset to zero. Now, how big should the circle be? It's 15 millimeters in diameter, which means it's 7.5 millimeters in radius, which is that. Oh. Um, and then the bigger one is 20 millimeters in radius. Right, so now I'll press escape. I'm actually going to delete this line because I was more using it as a reference line. Um, now, this circle needs to be split. You'll see why in a minute. So I'll come to split, say split. 
split line. Now it's basically one long line that goes around in a loop rather than an actual circle like this one. Right, so now I'll say line. I want it from that point there. I've got the quadrant snap active, activated. Press escape. Line again. There to there. Um, now I'm going to hit. Oh, I'm going to say pick lines. No offset. There. Now I want to split this line because I want it to be two lines. There you go. So now I can edit that one separately. I'm going to extend this slightly. I'll explain why in a minute. Um, now, what I need to do is say trim x slash extend to corner. Trim that to that. Now the reason why I split this is so that I could do that, uh, carry out that function. If this was a circle, that wouldn't work. That explains that. And now I want to fill it this line to that line. I don't think it will let me. Nope. Yep. So that's why I split that line there. Um, so I need to trim and extend there, that to that and that to that. See, if I didn't do that, then it wouldn't let me. I mean, it would let me trim, but I wouldn't have that line there and I'd have to draw another line. Another line, which is long. Well, longer. Not that long, but still. You've got to go for the point, what is it? The journey of least resistance in CAD. Anyway, fill it arc, which is that one. Um, now I'm going to hit this, and I'm going to hit that, and I can fill it, those lines. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to come in, activate radius, and say 10. And there you go, that's filleted. Um, Sorry, I forgot to mention that those radiuses are 10. That's why I picked 10. I didn't just pick a random number. I'm going to say the same here and here, and it's still 10. And now escape. And the reason why I made the lines further out is because 10 is perfectly in line, or takes this perfectly in line with that corner, and Revit sometimes has problems with that. I don't know if it... That's a problem for this 2019 version, but in 2018 it was causing me issues. So it, the workaround is to make it slightly longer if you have problems. Um, delete. Now I'm going to pick lines, pick this line, say OK. And there you go, I've got that structure there. However, I want it to be minus 20. So. I was drawing on that face, so anything positive draws out of the face, and anything negative draws into the face. So I'll change this to negative. There you go, done. Now, next, we're going to draw this circle, this tube next, um, circular tube. So I am Basically, I'm going to draw on the one of the work planes. The reason why is because I placed this perfectly in the center. Where are we? Whoops, that's the ceiling plan. So, as you can see, the length is 70 millimeters and the distance from this corner to the front face is 35 millimeters therefore the distance from here to here is 30 millimeter i mean 35 millimeters which is the same or well the distance from there to there is 35 which is the same distance as this distance um both distances are 35 but this is going to need to go this needs to go 40 in Anyway, so I'm going to draw on this line. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to. Whoops, apologies. I'm going to come back to 3D view and say set. Oh, create. Set pick front back. No. Pink left right. It might be front back for yours, depending on which ones you. Which distances. Which one you picked as 60 and which one you chose as 70. One making that first rectangle. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. Um, just pick the one that goes across 
So now I'm going to say extrusion. I'm going to come to right view. It might be different for you, um, but as long as you see this shape, it's all good. Say pick lines, offset. Now, I know that this circle, this center of this circle is 60 millimeters away from this corner here, which is that corner there. So I'll offset this 60 and I'll use that as a reference line. Pick the circle and I know that this is right, going to go right to the edge. I'm going to remove that. Um, it's going to be 30 millimeters. Now I can delete this reference line. It's not a reference line, but I'm using it as one. Um, because this has a 60 millimeter diameter, which means it's got a 30 millimeter radius, of course. Now the inside one has a 20 millimeter diameter. No, a 30 millimeter diameter, which is a 15 mil radius and then 20 for the other object. But we'll, we'll get to that one later. Anyway, so I'll draw this. What was it again? 15, right? Yeah. Just, just got to double check. Cool. That's that. Now I'm going to change this to 40. I think it should be minus 40, but let's just see. Yep. So it's drawn out. So I'll change this to negative so that it draws in to the face. Right. So that's cool. Now, I need to draw that circle there, inside, yeah? Now, it's got a an internal diameter of 20, so it's 10 millimeters in radius, and it's 6 millimeters away from the face, and it's the same on the other side, it's 6 millimeters away from that face. So that means that its length is 28 millimeters because 40 minus 12 is 28. Um, so that's useful. So there's two ways that you could do this. There's probably another way, but these are the two most common ways. The fastest way is to say create extrusion set work plane. I could use that as a work plane, but I'm just going to say pick a plane f for um, argument's sake. Pick that as a plane. And I'm going to say extrusion start minus six because I want it to be six inches in and extrusion end 34 because 40 minus six is 34. Now I want to pick lines, pick that and pick that. And I want to pick, draw another circle internally. I want to snap to the center. So I'll come to the edge and say type SC that snaps to the center. And that's got to be was five, right? No. 20 in diameter. Okay, yeah, so 10. Yeah, there you go. Um, and say, okay. Oh, minus 34. I should, I need to say. There you go. So now, I've got that. So I can see that that's right, but if you want to confirm, then you can come to the reference level of the floor plan. And that's it there, I think. Yep. And you can measure from there to there, six millimeters. And there to there gives you six. So, oh, and, uh, oh, that doesn't look right. 40. Oh, it is right. Hmm. Ah, see, that line was the line of the base plate. I mean, the plate coming across. I was just, I thought, I thought that this wasn't, didn't extend further out, further back. Anyway, um, what shall we do next? We should draw this back plate and then that plate. So, I'm going to create set pick okay that one i'll pick that face um no i won't actually i will pick 
I'll come back here. I'm going to say extrusion. I'm going to say set pick. Okay. I'm going to pick that as a work plane. Now come to left. Say pick lines. Pick that line. Pick that line. Draw a line from here to here. And here to here. So the reason why I picked this plane is so that I could draw based um draw around this circle. Say OK. Now I've still got the old settings there, so I'm going to change this. The start should be zero. Ooh. And the end should be minus ten. Because I want to draw in to the face. Yep. Cool. So, finally, we have the last bit, this bit here. Um, I did say there's another way of doing this one, but I'm not going to go through that in this video. Um, I'll go through it in another video. Actually, um, check the description below for any relevant videos so that video will be in the link and many other videos I deem to be relevant anyway so now I'm going to set or create set my work plane front back OK and I'm going to make an extrusion I'm going to come to back draw a line, or well, I'm going to pick lines, I'm going to pick that line and I'm going to pick that line. It won't let me pick that line because that's the edge of a circle, not really a line. Um, I'm going to come here and there, and then I'm going to go there. Now I'm going to trim, trim extend that to that and that to that, modify. Now I'm going to extend this further up but it needs to go through that corner. Now I'm going to move this up there and it's automatically adapted. Uh, you'll see why in a minute. And I'm going to say extrusion start, my, well extrusion end minus five and minus five. <coughs> Apologies, I just sneezed. Um, right, so now I'm going to say the tick. Oh, extrusion is too thin. Oh, sorry, minus 5 to positive 5. That's what, yeah. There you go. So it's going minus 5 that way and positive 5 that way. Because it's 10 thick. Yep. Now, the reason why I made it longer is because... If I just made it up to that point there, there'd be gaps on this side and that side, but I need it to go into the circle through that point. Now, what I also need to do now is I need to cut the edge of this out of that. Um, it's just for, it's just good practice firstly, and secondly, if you're working on a bigger project with bigger objects and you need Revit to tell you how much metal is being used, for example, you don't want that to be incorporated into your calculation. You want it to be cut out so that it calculates it more precisely. Um, or even if you had a million, millions of these or thousands of these on your project, um, you'd want to know how much they weigh and stuff like that. Anyway, um, so how I'll do that is I'll create void forms, void extrusion. I'll set my work plane. I'll pick a plane, say OK, pick this plane, come to the right. I'm going to set this to wireframe also so that I can see how far in I need to go. And I'm going to pick lines, um, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Then I'm going to trim extend, that to that, that to that, say OK. And now I'm going to come back to shaded. Yeah, so you see the problem. I've cut this as well. So now I'm going to 
come here say uncut geometry click that and click the void now if I select that it will if I go to a wireframe, you can see that this is still cut by that object and I can select it. So now I'm going to select the, select this and then it will let me select the void by itself and then come to top view and extend it back. You don't even need to come to top view for that, you can just, it will snap to it. You come there and you snap there, that's the face it snapped to, it's fine. Oh, and actually, there's actually a bit missing, so I will bring it forward. Right to this face. Cool, there you go. Um, and the reason why there's a little bit there on the edge is because this is the point where it meets the front, but the rest of them still keep going until they meet the higher part of the circle. Cylinder, so to speak. Great. Now, I want to apply a material to this, so I will, well firstly I want to join them all up. That's quick, so that to that, that to that, that to that, that to that, and the whole thing to that. So now it's all one object. You can still see the corners and these bits have removed the edges. Um, you can unjoin them by using that same tool. Now, if I highlight all of them, and come to filter and unselect the voids say apply say okay and come to materials click the little dots next to it um, if you're new if you've just launched this it will, it will look like this these are all the materials that are loaded into the project if you click this it will show you all the materials available to you so I am going to select AEC materials, maybe select metal and there's tons of different metals, there's al al aluminium or as you Americans say aluminium um, you know what I'll make it an adenized red al aluminium or aluminium man say apply, say ok oh, oh, I need to change it to realistic mode and there you go um, it doesn't look that realistic, if I may say so, but it looks alright-ish. Um, I'm actually going to change that. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. You can play around with that. Um, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please stay tuned for the next one. Thank you very much.